All right, quick little video here. Seems like I don't have enough projects going, so we better start another one. So, uh, actually, we're almost finished with this one. We're well along our way. But as you know, I bought a 3D printer here not too long ago. I think I mentioned that in a uh, one of the little shop updates. If I did well, put a little card up here for it. So I've just been playing with that printer and printing stuff out. I bought it for, for one particular project that... Um, is going on my recoiling stock and I felt it was good for tooling. I think I've mentioned that before too, but uh, just trying to learn the printer, find out what's going on, and I'm kind of amazed with its capabilities. So what I did is I printed out all kinds of accessories for that printer and we'll get into that at some point in time when I put out some videos on that printer and printing with it, you know, as we go along. But one of the little projects that I've been working on is a bullet collator for the for right now, it's gonna. This is gonna go on my star lubricizer. So I've already printed out the most of the 3D printed parts for that, and now I'm just working on the mounting and the assembly of it and everything. I shot a little video yesterday of bending the upright support, which is just a piece of conduit, um, to go on the to mount the bullet collator on the star itself, and it was made out of some galvanized pipe. Um, you know, before everybody gets all upset, why, yes, I did have ventilation going on, you're not supposed to heat galvanized, it's bad to breathe, and all that good stuff, so before the responsibility police decide to jump all over that, why, we'll just say I took care of that. Um, you know I'm a great believer in personal freedoms, but I also believe that there's personal responsibility that goes along with that, so if you choose to do some of this stuff, why be responsible about it, and, and know the dangers of doing it and, and take appropriate action but you're on your own you know you're all grown up people so if you choose to, to follow some of the paths that I've taken why uh, be aware that you do that at your own risk so anyway I've got the uh, I've got the upright form for that and actually it's welded onto its base I built a base we're just bolting it onto the back side of the lubricizer stand and I'll show all that once it's done um, no sense in you know, rehashing stuff we've already done, but I did find the, the bending of the, the tube itself, which is kind of a la Dylan, why that's the way it mounts like their bullet collator does. It's got a little S-curve offset in it, so that's what I put into this piece of conduit, and I'll show that video, probably tag it right along with this one, uh, and insert it into this one. Um, but I'll go back, I've got it welded up, I'm going to contour it a little bit, and uh, then I'll go ahead and powder coat it so it matches the rest of the stand, and then we can mount the rest of the collator. Uh, I'm amazed by the capabilities of some of the 3D printers, or any of the 3D printers. I bought a very inexpensive one, but this is a bullet collator, and this was done, this is just downloaded off of Thingiverse, uh, Ammo Mike, I believe is who it is. Yeah, Ammo Mike 83 is the one that's drawn this up and put the, put the uh, STL files out there, and it's very nice. I'm very happy with it. This is a configuration that I think I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to run the down feed tube here or if I'm going to run it out of out of this spot here, we'll decide that once it's mounted, um, but it will mount up onto the onto the press, you know, 45 degree angle, something like this, and then our spring runs down into our bullet collator feeder. So, anyway, that's kind of where we're at with it. Um, once I get the stand powder coated up, or the, you know, upright support powder coated up and installed, well, then we'll go back to the press and I'll show you what we've going on, and we'll see if we can't get the, the tuning and everything done of this. I have the motors here, and the optical sensor for the shutoff for it is here. Um, I've got a speed control ordered. They were all ordered at the same time and I thought they'd be here at the same time but um, this was a, an Amazon order and I thought they were all here in the US and come to find out the speed control I got tracking the other day and it was being shipped China Post. So I wasn't real impressed with that. Whether I overlooked that or whether something changed along the way I don't know. But anyway so that's going to be a hold up for it. But we can get all the rest of it mounted. We can get it um, set up and manually index it and make sure everything else is right. And then when we've got the speed control, we can go ahead and power it and, and do everything we need to do to, to finalize this. I've got some um, plates already printed out for 45 and 9 millimeter, and this will primarily, well, the, we're going to expand this. We're going to put these on our on our two Dillon 550s, too, if they work out the way I think they are. And for, from what I'm seeing so far, there's no reason they won't. This is a, this is a pretty cool little setup. So, anyway, I'll... Uh, show you once we get the the stand done and this was some EMT conduit that I had and what we've done is we've just bent it built us an upright got it powder coated and we're going to take it back mount it on the on the uh, stand for the press and uh, we'll take you back there and show it I do have a cap to go in the top end 
which is just a spare cap that I had, a little press-in plastic gizzy. Let me grab a hammer. And it just hopefully sets right in the top. This was probably done for something smaller than this, but get in there. There we got a cap on. Okay, let's take it back and mount it on the press. See what it looks like. Okay. Star Lubricizer, we're running out of space back here, which is part of the reason we're trying to remodel all of this. So anyway, here's our stand right here. It mounts to the back right here, and we've already had it set in place. So we just got a couple of holes on the back side of the mounting stand. Let's see if we can get it started here. I maybe should have cleaned out the... the uh, threads in the bracket after I powder coated it. If I can keep my face out of it. I'm just tighten it back in place. Okay. There's our mounting bracket. Now, I don't know that I've necessarily showed the bullet collator yet, and I'm still waiting on a replacement motor for this. I have uh, already set this unit up and planned on having it running, and uh, it just uses an inexpensive gear motor, and I've burned up a couple of them so far. I had one of them that I uh, thought was bad to start with, and... Uh, come to find out I believe it was probably the motor controller that was bad because I put a second one on tested it before I hooked up anything else and uh, the motor functioned fine and then when I hooked up the speed control for it why I apparently burned it out there's something wrong with that speed control so I'm waiting for a replacement for that to show up and then we'll get on with the final installation of all of this but anyway here's our 3d printed bullet collator and uh, I'm going to build a couple more of these so I'll show a little bit more about the the setup and printing process for them because I want uh, one for each of the each of the Dillon 550s so we'll set them up there like I say we'll get a little more involved but I thought the easiest one to set up to start with is going to be on the on the lubricizer because we'll have to figure out our feed mechanism for on the for on the uh, 550s We'll have to figure out the bullet feeder itself. So this is the basic installation. And of course, we'll adjust where it mounts, what angle it mounts on that's going to be the, the best for it. But this is the way it'll work. The motor mounts right underneath. And this is, there are several options you can do for motors. This is the style that I've chosen to, to put on here. These are inexpensive motors. They're $12 or $13 for the little gear motor. And then we've got the controls, and I've got these partially wired. This is the um, this is our bad speed controller right here, so we'll have to take that out. But this will mount right up there like that. We've got an on-off switch and then our speed control. And I'm not going to order the same speed controller. This one was one that I ordered when I ordered the original motor and uh, then the optical sensor for it. And I had to wait for this when it came from China, and it's like I say, it's apparently bad. So will uh, something's not right with it so we'll redo this assembly with a with a different one and get that going but that mounts up there these are our 3d printed plates bullet plates and we'll uh, this is a nine millimeter here and you can print them out for whatever caliber you want for the bullet feeders and like I say we'll set up a, a couple more for on the on the Dillons and uh, it looks like a pretty good assembly so there's our mount for it. We're fairly stable. I'm still working on the feeder assembly for this. It'll be a some sort of a spring assembly, I believe, is what I'm using. I've looked at a couple of different options, but I'll have to build a little bit different assembly here to mount it up. And we're going to put a optical shutoff sensor in it, which will mount um, probably down here someplace along along the way to where we can get our our. Um, sensor and everything mounted. We can see our bullets as they feed up and we'll have to adapt this to, to fit. We'll probably just build a new little adapter, short adapter, so that this can sit down here and then our spring will run down to it. 
but it looks like a pretty cool little uh, setup. The main body takes all of it. 3D printers are fairly slow, or mine is anyway, so it takes a fair amount of time to print out the body for it, but it came out fine. looks real good. Um, real happy with it. It's all open source. You can find it on Thingiverse, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a neat little setup. Hopefully you found something a little bit interesting. If you didn't have not already, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. And um, any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.